Hey guys, we are the substitutes. I'm Gorov. This is Omar, and that guy is Majid. We've had an awesome, awesome weekend of football as the Chelsea Tottenham game comes to an end. It's 2 0 right now. Tottenham getting absolutely spanked and reversing the relegation battle of North London. We'll start <laughs> our review of this weekend's football with Omar looking into the United game. A bit scary there, Omar, for a little while, but you guys pulled through. Uh, yeah, I was very impressed with uh, West, um, West Ham and Kurt Zuma in particular. I thought he played an excellent game. Um, United went behind and then came into life and equalized. And then after that, it was just a bit of a lull game. And Ole surprised every single United fan by making the substitutions that actually made an impact. Uh, he's not known for that. He's never been known for that, um, which is remarkable because he's a super sub. Um, and uh, Matic went to Lingard. And um, yeah, he persists with Fred, though. We will always have Fred in our hearts. <laughs> uh, Matic, how did you feel about what? How did you feel when West Ham scored that first goal? What, what was going through your mind? This season, oh man, it's so difficult. It's so there's no one knows. Everyone's talking about the top six. No one knows what the top six means anymore. Um, it's not enough because what's so scary is this this season in particular. You could do everything right and you still might not win. And so to go once you're behind, halas, like you're behind now. Like you've got. You now have to do right, and you need help where, like, Tottenham, for example, they're not helping matters. Chelsea, like, you need other teams to help you out this season. And so you need to first get your own job done, though. You need to grab three points. And so in a week where Liverpool has taken three, City has theoretically, like, dropped two when you draw, this is... Th the pressure's on, and you're playing the next day. The pressure's on. You really want to take advantage or at least keep up, whichever way you want to look at it. Oh, shit. This is a big gold medal scramble, by the way. Warner missed another one. Um, it was a good save by Lloris. He's been involved. Like It was like goal line scrambles and stuff like that, but should be 3-0 hey, to Chelsea. We want to talk about serious football here. Leave Team Warner out of this. Um, want to get into another game that was actually congratulations to Brentford. I just want to touch on this down to 10 men winning 2 0 against Wolves. Awesome result for Brentford, especially for a newly promoted team after that opening day win against Arsenal. This team is they've got character, man. And also on the other side of the spectrum, like what's going on at Wolves? Um, it's been a bit weird there. Can't buy and a goal. They can't really keep going. So, uh, Omar, have you uh, have you had any thoughts on what Wolves can do next week uh, to to things up a little bit? They've been leaking goals, finding it hard to score. What can they do? Well, I wouldn't say they've been leaking. Well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But they've had so many chances. Um, I think it's. I think they should just trust the manager because I think they most of the games that they've played this season, they've played really, really well. I think at just some point that they'll click, but they need some end product. And when I say that, I mean, like, they've got one of the most exciting players to watch in the Premier League in Adama Traore, but the guy's end product is so patchy. Um, I think, But I think that if, if they just start, they just go on a little bit of a run, I think... They will do really well this season. Uh, I like their manager. I think um, I think he's done really well. And it was time for a change for them with Nuno leaving. So, yeah, I think they'll come good. Brentford's, right. a, cool, Brentford's a cool Cinderella story. Like, plucky upstarts. Wolves, they just need to get one, two over the line. And then things will, like, figure themselves out. Yeah. Now, after uh, we have another plucky upstart story after three straight losses in their first three games arsenal win their second in a row now on six points well out of the relegation zone for the first time in the season 
Uh, Magic, what did you think about Arsenal versus Burnley? What did uh, what did you get out of that game? What did Arsenal look like? Did they look better? Did they look like a team that has a plan? Are we now seeing Arteta in uh, manager of the year? Obama Yang new contract? <laughs> what is happening? Um, I think my friend Omar's predictions are coming true. The ship is being stabilized. I don't necessarily think, and I just think that that's just like prolonging, um, death. I don't know how to explain it. You're just, uh, you're a vegetable at this point. It's just Arsenal. They're not really, they're not thriving and they're not. Survive like when there's a relegation battle, there's still like that, like thirst for survival. You have that eye of the tiger in a different way. When you're going for number one, you have the eye of the tiger a different way. Here, they're just meandering. Middle um, of the yeah. thing, like I don't know. A metaphor comes to mind: one of being tied to the train tracks and being able to see the train come and just screaming for dear life and help, <laughs> and then. Some- comes along and blindfolds you and gags you in the mouth. And then the train kills you. But uh, in Arsenal's case, they do that to themselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, but look, uh, now on six points, I think next week they have the North London Derby. If Arsenal are on nine points after that, you know, you, you basically got a complete reversal. And uh, I don't think a lot of Arsenal fans would be too pissed off if he manages to get three points. So. Well, my, my question is, before we get to the Derby, are we at that level where Arsenal beating Burnley is, like, an achievement? Are we, like, is a highlight of the coaching, like, thing? For them, yeah. I think Absolutely. for them, relative to where they've been this season, just anything that's lost is like, oh, yeah, we're fucking, we're on a move now. Um... I want to touch on another awesome game uh, if you're in the title race, which Arsenal are not, which is City versus Southampton. We got a nil-nil draw. Uh, Omar, you had a look at this game. What did you think? I was bored out of my mind. I really felt the game needed fans. Um, and we have a Guardiola video coming out soon, so we will uh, link that in later on. Um, no, around, I don't know. Around, I, I, yeah, they, still have, they still have a lockdown. So Etihad is the only stadium that's not allowed fans back yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, uh, I don't think, oh, it's, I, I, I don't oh, think it's a, they're not allowed in. I just don't think nobody wants to go. Um, <laughs> like there's just not enough real fans there. Sorry, Naomi. I'm really sorry. I know you love them. But God, your your club is shit. Um, look, he pleaded after the Leipzig game, we need fans in the stadium. It was a 6-3 result. And how does he treat his club to a game where they had 16 shots and only one on target? Um, not exactly something that you can shout out home about. So um, I think it's a good day for football when Manchester City embarrassed themselves. And they did so. Amazingly well there. It was like watching the modern-day Spanish national team. There's a lot of passing. Everything's working technically right. It's everything's right, but it's not. There's nothing actually happening. Like it looks fine, but there's nothing actually going on. No cutting ahead. Yeah, I. Um, I was really happy uh, with the Villa Everton result. Uh, feel for Rafa, but that's what you get when you go to Everton. Uh, still wish Rafa the best. <laughs> Uh, but Villa really did put on a clinic, and they seem to be moving on really well uh, with Lai post Jack Grealish. Um, on the other hand, Brendan Rodgers continues to struggle, losing 2 1 to Brighton. Um, weird result for Leicester. They had chances to win it. Uh, defensively, just too many gaps, I think. And then we'll get into the final game uh, for the week before. We get into the Chelsea Tottenham one, which is Liverpool and Crystal Palace. Patrick Vieira and his boys came to Anfield. Uh, and it was actually a really, really good game to watch. So watch the whole game. Um, for the first 15, 20 minutes, Palace were on top of it, man. They pressured Liverpool, kept uh, kept us back, uh, penned back, really couldn't play through their press. Um, it was a bit scrappy. 
got the first goal and then things just kind of opened up for there. It was still edgy uh, till about the second goal, but Liverpool, with all the quality that they've got, really just came out in the end. Um, the persistence, the repetition, the sustained pressure, the hemming in of teams um, eventually pays off. And this Liverpool team doesn't seem to have any issues scoring goals anymore. Um, we also had a debut for Konate, which was fantastic. Uh, good debut for him, keeping a clean sheet. Uh, Simikas looked great on the left, deputizing for Robertson. Uh, James Milner was my man of the match, personally, uh, filling in for Trent at right back. Uh, led the team in tackles, interceptions, distance covered, uh, passes completed. He was just all over the pitch. Uh, he was fantastic. Kept Zaha quiet for the most part. Uh, even managed to have a little dig at Trent, saying that Trent had an illness and he was guessing it was Zaha-itis or something of that sort, which is pretty funny coming from the old man in the team. Um, but Palace, I have to say, they looked fantastic. Um, Palace are really, really good, man. And Palace are going to bother a lot of teams. They have a lot of weapons going forward. They come at you in a lot of different ways. Um, they're very good on the counter. They're quite solid in defense. They've got a lot of very good, strong, experienced Premier League players in that team. And Vieira has them playing really good, solid football. That 3-0 scoreline is a bit flattering to Liverpool. Um, I would have been happy to, no, to be very I, honest. Um, I think one of the things that uh, I was most impressed with is um, Thiago. Um, I personally think he's a world-class player. And I don't say that lightly. He reminds me a lot of Skulls, the way he controls the game, the way he can beat the press. He knows where everybody is on the pitch. I think uh, he won't get the recognition he deserves because he plays the pass before the assist. Like, he just opens up the game. I, but I personally think he's world-class. And the fact that you have a player like that is scary for the rest of the league, but great for you guys. Because you don't know how good that is until you actually have it. Yeah, so, I think... Um, I, I think... I, I was one of the first to say last season when we signed him like that for me was one of the best signings we've had in the last few years because Thiago is truly world class in this position. Uh, very few players are able to do what Thiago does on the ball. Uh, his movement off the ball is also very underrated. Um, he's a great guy in the locker room. Uh, he's a great team pl team player. Uh, and he's been fantastic, man. Uh, he had a little calf injury. Um, Liverpool say that it's not something too serious. So we should be having him come back soon. Uh, shout out to Sadio Mane for breaking a Premier League One record. Century. Which is amazing. Ten goals in consecutive games um, against Crystal Palace. That is... <laughs> like, so that, he, that explains the means. Um, you know, I, I think he beat Robin Van Persie's record. So like three nil, um, three nil. Just letting you know, um, Chelsea have utterly spanked. Wow. Spurs. I think. Uh, and, and actually, we should probably move on to that game bigger. now. So, so we we Hold all up. pretty much watched this game uh, while we we're recording this. Um, Tottenham, according to what I saw, Spurs weren't that bad for the first half. Like, they, they were pretty good. They had some decent chances. They had the better chances, I thought, in the first half. I told and, you it would be three. And <laughs> all of a sudden, I think Chelsea just took over the game. Chelsea just absolutely slaughtered them after that first goal went in. It's just been so easy for Chelsea to play around Spurs. Um, Manager, what are your thoughts? Do Spurs look like Arsenal? They look like Arsenal in the sense that I feel they don't, they themselves don't know who they are anymore. They've had a couple of life changing bad breakups over the recent, and they're still trying to just 
life after two, three bad breakups, I feel. And they almost just had a bad breakup this fucking summer with Harry Kane. Jesus. With Harry Kane. And so the drama, like, I think they just have not centered themselves. And we're seeing that because they played well in spurts. You're right. In the first half, I would argue they were maybe even they might have pipped Chelsea as the better team. But with this Chelsea in particular, if they score one, they're scoring three. I've said this last recording. Like, and this is the modern EPL where like you need to go for two, three, four, zero. You need to have that goal difference, that plus one point. Because it's not going to be enough this season to do everything perfectly. You need to, everything needs to go right. And everything needs to go wrong for the others. By the way, it could be four. It, it but, genuinely could be four. Oh, no. Um, you look. really touched on something really important, Majid. Um, you know, I think Tottenham have been through like a rough, dramatic past couple of years when you think about, you know, Champions League final, losing to Liverpool, losing Pochettino, you know, then having Mourinho come on, that's emotional as it is. Mourinho is a heavy ta- taxing guy emotionally. Then you have all or nothing being shot. Then you have the fucking pandemic. Then you come back. Then Mourinho gets fired. Now you have this whole transfer thing with Harry Kane. Then you have Nuno coming on. Then Harry Kane is staying. Like, Tottenham just need to... Tottenham just needs to go away with, like, her girlfriends and, like, find herself for a bit and, like, maybe do, like, a couple of tequila shots and, like, have a one-night stand or something. Just, like, she just needs to relax and, like, find herself for a little while because it's been rough. And Tottenham, we care about you. And... I don't. We know you're at your best when you're a fun slag, not a sad one. So, cheer up. (laughs) Uh, Chelsea, on the other hand. Uh, have been awesome this season, man. Chelsea have been great. Um, I, for one, absolutely fucking hate them. I think they're shit to watch. Magic, what are your thoughts on this Chelsea team and what Tuchel's doing? No, but they defend well. They pass really well and they score, score, score. Like, I, I really like them. Like, I don't like Chelsea, but... I like good football, and I think this is really good football. It's winning football, if nothing else. And again, it's now 1-0 score lines. At least since Lukaku has come in, I feel, again, it's a complete 3D team now. There is a, like, last year's Chelsea, how they won the Champions League, I don't know. Because that was not, like, their strikers were not the finished thing yet. They were 20, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds. But with this guy now, suddenly, I mean, I feel it's three, the three arrows, right? The, like, Liverpool three arrow thing. You have that fully, fully here. And they're proving it. More importantly, they're taking out good teams, top teams in 2-3-0. And they're not bragging. This isn't Jose Mourinho's Chelsea either where, like, they're strutting around. They're just quietly silent assassins, I feel. Yeah. Omar, what, what do you think is one thing that could possibly catch this Chelsea team off guard because what we've seen from them so far has pretty much been impeccable. Um, The one thing I would have said is their midfield Um, because Kante is always susceptible to to injury these days. Um, But I think they made a very astute signing in Seoul. Um, Look, it's very hard to see uh, a weakness in this Chelsea side, but having said that, if they get an injury to Thiago, um, I think that could that could be quite big for their season because he's been a really key player for them. Um, I know they won the Champions League without Thiago playing for a majority of the match, but throughout the long season, he could take its toll. So they could just be a couple of injuries away, but good squad depth as well. That's another thing to say. It's very hard to see real weaknesses in the squad. Whereas United, you can see defensive midfielder. Whereas Liverpool, you know, if Van Dijk goes, like, it changes the whole squad. Um, Chelsea yeah, is like that. I think, I think for me, like, you know, if, if there's an injury to Conte, I think it changes that Chelsea team. Because I think yep. he, he has the workload of two players. I think he's hard to replace. I think an injury to Lukaku always yeah. going to have to replace. 
Um, I think, you know, they can live without Kai Havertz for a couple of weeks. They can live without Mason Mount for a couple of weeks. Pulisic, yeah. Pulisic, yeah. The rest of these guys, I think they can live without them, you know. I think it's just Kante and Lukaku for me. Um, You know, where one of those guys goes and you're like, oh, shit. And the goalkeeper. Because remember, Kepa is always do a fucking mistake. Yep. Um... That's true. Mendy was out today. Kepa was in. Um, I mean, you've given me hope, which is a good thing, uh, because uh, I, I like that. I, I never wanted. To, I never thought I could see a weakness in this Chelsea side, and now you've pointed out a few, so it's great. Um, they're not yeah. great, though. They're injury based, which is never nice. Like, no, no, that's not, that's not that's not what I mean. I mean, like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. No, that no, I know, I know, I know. I, I would never wish injury on anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless it's unless it's Benjamin Mendy. It's just this Chelsea team does have a full on starting eleven sitting on the bench as well. Like, if something does happen, they do have Plan B, C, and D. Yeah. I'd love for them to have a look in my plan D. Um, but maybe that's for next time. Um, <laughs> guys, it's been an awesome weekend of football. Uh, hopefully we'll catch you all soon. Um, at the next... I think, I think we'll do a live stream maybe soon. Catch that one. I think Magic will let you guys know about it. I don't know how. He'll call you. Something like that. Like, subscribe, get in touch, comment. Let us know what you think about Magic's hat. It is... Pretty rad. Cheers. (laughs) Take care, guys.